How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to another edition of the Stupid Questions podcast. Today on the pod, we're going to have a conversation with Lara Gruden. She is the soon-to-be uh, wife of Sam Long and the mother of their little boy, Leo. She's a professional triathlete, has quite the story, and... Yeah, today's conversation, we dive deep. It's a little bit longer. I hope you don't mind, Uh, but it was super fun. Get to talk a lot about life, culture, athletics, obviously, and a lot about motherhood. I'm learning a ton and hopefully to be a father in the next couple of years. So this was a really enlightening conversation for me and super uh, hats off to Laura for just sharing from a place of vulnerability. Really appreciate her. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to Laura Gruden. Thanks first. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, it's an honor to get to meet you and uh, I've been looking forward to having this conversation for a while, but thanks for making it happen. Yeah, I've been seeing your interviews all over social media and I'm like, who is this guy? Like stupid questions. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, it's just starting to gain some traction. So yeah, I, I started the podcast uh, just over a year ago after okay. running a couple of other little podcasts, actually. Um, one was based on like the senior uh, living industry because I started a business in that. And then it's like, oh, I don't really love this. So I stopped doing that. And I did one with another company where we made uh, camping gear and that one never really took off. But this one, I was just like, well, I'm going to interview people who I find like really interesting. And my passions right now are triathlon business, um, entrepreneurship and music. So I'm just having people on that circle around that triathlon has been the biggest one. So I think that's what's helped grow because the triathlon community is so nice, especially a lot of the pros have helped share and stuff like that. So yeah, it's been been great. But uh, I'm just curious for my own selfishness. What was the first uh, episode that you remember hearing about? Like Uh, Lisa. The carrots. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I saw that you had interviewed, was it Rachel? Uh, Rachel Smith? Uh, no, not Smith. No, I Rachel Smith. Um, uh, Olson. Olson. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And then Brandon told me that he yeah. had been on your podcast as well. Yeah. And he was like, just be ready because he asked some deep questions. I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, li- I like the deep stuff. I, sometimes on, on this side of the, the camera, it can be har- hard to ask them because you never know how people are going to respond. But generally, I would say by and large, people do really well and it's it's fun to dive in deep. So, yeah. Well, it's the only way that like we can learn anything because if you keep it su- superficial too much, then, you know, how do people learn, right? Yeah, exactly. Hundred percent. So, um, a couple of just off the cuff questions because I was curious as I was writing up a little bit of this transcript to get ready. Uh, first of all, how do I pronounce your last name, and what is the etymology? Uh, Gruden. So, Gruden, okay. like uh, John Gruden. Uh, okay. That's usually if I say people or his last name, they're like, "Oh, okay, got it." Um, and uh, what is the etymology? What does that mean? That means like, what is the, um, this, the history of the word? Is it just a last name or is it like a place or does it have a specific meaning? Yeah. So, um, actually our name is very well known in the town of Italy, um, of where my parents were born. Okay. So like, if you go there, you'll see, um, Igor Gruden and he was a very famous writer and poet in that area. Um, so there's like, uh, different spots that are dedicated to him. There's a big stone that my dad did like the unraveling of that they dedicated the beach area to him. And wow. so our last name is very uh, strong over there in that yeah. part of Italy. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, did you grow up here in the U.S.? I did. I did. Okay. So I was Have born been... here. Okay. Have yeah. you been and back then... to the family? Yeah. So um, grow... after I was born, um every summer basically i'd go and spend the whole summer there so i'm fluent in all the languages we speak slovenian and italian because we live so close to the slovenian border Mm -hmm. um and then this past summer we just got back uh we stayed in italy for like three weeks um, and we're just like on the farm and it's super easy because sam can go train and he loves riding in slovenia and then i'd have like all the family my grandma aunts uncles cousins and they like help with leo and you know, it's funny because I was just telling Sam the other day, I'm like, I think our son like doesn't speak English because my grandma from Italy yeah. came to the U.S. when Leo was born, stayed for five months, had to go back to Italy because she with her visa, she can only be here for six months and then came back and then we went to Italy. But she's 80, but she is so good with him. Like 
constantly repeating words. She didn't wow. speak English, so only in Slovenian. And yeah. so you'll tell him to do something in English, and he like kind of looks at me, and then I'll say it in Slovenian. He's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I'm so, always fascinated by kids and their ability to pick up language. Uh, I love totally. language, but yeah, especially at such a young age. My best friend, he has a little, uh, she's almost two, and it's like every week now or every day you can see the new level of just understanding for sentence structure and oh, communication, yeah. and it's like just building. And I was just like, wow, I want to have kids. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we do yeah. soon, but yeah, it's just crazy to see that from from these different perspectives, but yeah, that's why. Oh yeah, and like the milestones they hit, and he just started walking two weeks ago, and oh, you know, wow. he looks like a wobbly drunk person when he's yes. walking, but like <laughs> you just see him gaining more confidence. It's really cool to see. I mean, it really is. Yeah. Uh, how you said he just? How old is Leo? Yeah, he, Leo just turned one. He just turned one. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So, what I what know. kind of words are we working with right now? Like, obviously, Slovenian, but is is it just like just, single? I want. I yeah, don't. No, not even. It's like mama, dada. Uh, he just what now when I walk him in the stroller, he like waves to every car or mm -hmm. people that come by. Uh, bye bye. That's about it. Um, yeah. I don't know the talking. I, I don't really know when it kind of happens, but the walking definitely happened like right away. I mean, he crawled maybe three weeks and then boom, started walking. Um, yeah. So the talking, I don't know if it just takes a little longer because there's so many languages that are being spoken mm. or like what the deal is. Yeah, yeah, that's super interesting. Well, it, it's always cool to kind of watch and track the journey of the kids, but I'd be curious to know for you, like obviously you go through a lot of changes physically, emotionally, spiritually, really? however you want to uh, uh, tag that. What has the journey been like from you for you from like, okay, you're pregnant to now you're one year postpartum, like a different sleep schedule. How is everything? Yeah. So, um, I made a post on his birthday, you know, saying like happy birthday and it's been a great year, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't really get into things. And the other day I actually sat down and was starting to write some stuff out because I was like, Oh, I want to share like actually how the year has been. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's good that you asked me that question because like I was talking to some other moms as well and you know being pregnant was awesome it was very easy for me you know I was still able to kind of do training and it, I didn't really have any issues um and then had Leo also the birth went very well easy um but I think like the hardest thing for me is that I was not fully prepared of like what it actually means to have a child and like mm. become a mother um, you know, I've definitely seen it everywhere and, you know, everyone, I, I mean, a lot of people have kids, so it's not like not a common thing. And so you think, oh, okay, like it can't be that difficult. Um, and it's really not talked about enough of how hard it is for women. Like, mm. yes, I'm so grateful. And like, yes, I'm, you know, of course, very happy to be a mother, but like, it is really hard. Like, it is yeah. really hard. I mean, you're so sleep deprived, especially like moms that are breastfeeding, like you're giving your body every day. Like, you know, I was struggling. Um, I'd go do a workout and boom, my milk supply drops. And so then like, you know, you're drinking all this tea to like, make sure you get the milk up because you got to feed your baby. Yeah, um, well. yeah. And like, it, for me, it was really hard to keep weight on because, you know, I'm giving all this nutrition to my baby. I'm like eating, you know, no one else cooking like loads of pasta. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put some more calories in there. And then like some moms actually like have the opposite and they like gain a lot of weight. I mean, it's just so, <laughs> um, and then, you know, with the sleep deprivation, it, 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 I don't even know. I remember I was trying to tell Sam, it's like, I don't even know how to describe, like it is torture. And I know that like <laughs> they use that with military and stuff like that, but like, it is just so hard. Um, especially with our relationship, like, you know, training as a professional athlete, like there's two things you can't be, you cannot be hung over and go to training and mm. actually have a solid workout. And you like cannot be sleep deprived because your body's just not going to perform. And so, you know, an agreement that we had, it's like, Hey, Laura, I'm sorry, but like, you got to do the, all the night shifts and, you know, I'm going to help you as much as I can during the day, like when I'm not training, but like I have to sleep. And so like, you know, doing all the night just by myself, like, 
yeah. it, it makes you become that kind of a crazy person mm-hmm. um, just because, you know, you're just so tired and you still have to push through because you have this little person that relies on you. Yeah. Um, you know, thank God, like my family is really close to us. So, you know, my mom would come in from California and come and help like, you know, for the weekend, but she works and my dad lives in Tucson, but he lives like 40 minutes away, but he would come, you know, bring some groceries or like, just, I'm like, just hold the baby so I can go take a shower. Mm -hmm. Um, and then my grandma from Italy, but you know, again, she's 80, so it's not like she can really do a lot, but she could definitely like sit there and kind of be with the baby and let me just have some time to myself. Um, I think like, one thing I've had to learn is like, I have to ask permission for things. So, which sounds crazy, but you know, it's like, okay, Sam comes home and it's like, Hey, can I go take a shower real quick? Or but like, not in a weird way. It's just like, you know, Hey, is it okay if I go to the grocery store and you like stay with Leo and, and not mm. even like, Oh, they're babysitting. It's just like, you literally just have to ask for permission, which is crazy. Um, and then what else? I mean, I just think that like, you know, your freedom is gone. You know, this, <laughs> it, it's basically like you're living your life now for your baby. I mean, of course they say, Hey, you still have to take time for yourself and like enjoy your life. But like, it's only to a point that you can really do that because like I said, you have this person that relies on you. And if you want to be a good mom and be present in the baby's life, like you're going to dedicate everything you can to right. them. Um, but it's, it's been quite an adjustment. Yeah. Um, I've definitely, you know, I know you spoke to Brandon. So like he, thank God I've had all my journey with me because there are times when, you know, you're so sleep deprived and things are crazy and you haven't taken a shower. And, you know, I don't talk about this lightly, but like you almost become kind of suicidal because you're just like, yeah. I can't keep doing this. Mm-hmm. And so he, you know, we really work together to like, be at peace like with where things are it's like okay Laura like you know we have to mourn that you don't have that freedom that you used to have or like you can't go and do those workouts like you used to go train all day or you know okay now it's time to mourn like you know we're gonna take a step back from triathlon and you know shift things to help Sam become the best in the world and you know take care of Leo and be able to be a stay-at-home mom so it's been like a lot of adjustments and moving parts. And I feel very fortunate to have someone in my corner helping me through that because yeah. I don't know how moms do it alone. Like that. I really don't. Yeah. It's such a huge thing. And just, uh, first of all, thank you so much for sharing all that. Cause that's um, really eye opening to me. I mean, I'm, so I'm 32, I think I'm 32, I'm 31 or 32. I can't remember, um, honestly, but, um, I'm the oldest of three, okay. so I'm, like I said, in my 30s. My youngest sister, she's almost 20, um, and I watched my mom go from like this, you know, all growing up, how I knew her to be like the intense provider. She's always got to be there. It's like she has this desire to be needed, and then after okay. we became empty nesters, like I, or we became, she became empty nesters, and we left the nest, I kind of watched her go through this almost crisis of like figuring out who she was again yeah. and, and realizing yeah. like what you're talking about, you've lost that freedom. Like she had this freedom and like, I don't even know what to do with it. So yeah. it's kind of what she was feeling and thinking, and she's been working through that. So I'm wondering from you, cause you're on the first part of that spectrum, like, and you've been describing that. So you're changing how you identify personally with yourself, how you identify with Leo, with Sam, your family as a professional right. athlete. So my question for you is who is Laura? Yeah. So that actually was a huge thing that I had to ask myself because, um, especially when I had to step away from triathlon, I feel like I always identified myself as like, Oh, I'm this professional athlete and I do personal training on the side as well with clients. Um, I work with like older clients. I love helping them with rehab and, you know, Mm. to be able to just like walk in their kitchens alone or play with their Mm. grandkids. So um, it was definitely a huge transition when I stepped away from triathlon. But I feel like right now that's what I'm kind of struggling with. Like, who is this new person? You know, okay, yes, I'm a mom. And yes, like I now work for Sam because, you know, we're trying to be a team as me, like being his manager and helping him with his schedule and stuff like that, just to take, some of that load off that he can completely focus on triathlon. 
Sure. Um, and then, yeah, this other piece of me, I'm kind of like, okay, but what else is there? You know, what, what else am I passionate about? What else can I do? But it's hard because I am a stay at home mom. So I am with Leo 24 seven. Um, and the time that he goes to sleep, like napping, people are like, oh, like, why don't you, you know, read a book or relax or, you know, watch TV. And it's like, it's so funny that people say, hey, you sleep when the baby sleeps, because it's like, really, because who's going to hold down the house? You know, mm-hmm. like if I do that and it's mm-hmm. now that he's walking, I go and put clothes away and he goes back and like takes it all out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, like I, I really am now that he turned one, though, things are getting a little bit easier. You know, uh, yesterday for the first time I was able to go to the gym and I took him to the kids center for an hour and I was like, okay, like, is this going to be okay? He's going to cry. Like, and he just mm-hmm. walks in there and he's like, bye mom. See you later. And uh, I was like, yeah, oh, fierce okay. independence. Like, nice. Yeah. I mean, he is just a little explorer, you know, wants to do his own thing, which is awesome. I mean, one lady, she was like, wow, you must be doing something right. If your baby's not, you know, Super crying attached. his head off. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, so I think now, like maybe I will be able to kind of start to discover you know, okay, what is my next step in life? Like, mm-hmm. yes, I want to be super involved in Leo's life. Yes, I want to support Sam as well. But like, what is it for me? Um, I like for some reason, I have a little bit of like this calling that I really want to share more about how hard it is that first year, because I just feel like, you know, there's just not a lot of information. I remember um, doing a podcast with Sky. And, um, even talking with Polly, who are both pregnant and, you know, they were just asking simple questions and then I start getting into things and they're like, whoa, like, I didn't even know that. And I'm like, yeah, like, Hey, you have to be ready because things are going to get really hard for your relationship as well. Because mm. when you're sleep deprived and your husband's going to work or your husband's going to, you know, ride his bike and do his training. Cause they're both, I think Holly's husband maybe is a trial, I can't remember but not skies, Mm -hmm. you know, and you're home all day. Yeah. Resentment starts building a little bit, you know, you're, then they come home and they're tired and you're like, no, no, I need your help. Like it's challenging in her relationships and not just with your partner. Like it can be challenging with family members, you know, like, I don't know, your mom comes over and you know, you like doing the bottle a certain way for the baby. And they're like, Oh no, no. Like this is how I used to be the bottle. It's like, I don't really care how you used to do the bottle. Just do it the way that I want to do it. Yeah, you sound so like my sister. Like, <laughs> I just mean, had a yeah, baby. It's like, it's yeah. just a lot of adjustments. And especially as a new mom, you're so protected. You don't know what mm. you're doing, you know. Um, so not, I kind of went off tangent, but. No, yeah. it's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there, there's so much to that. It's really interesting, too, because I. As I was kind of thinking about this interview, I was looking at your Instagram. That was like the place I was drawing some inspiration from. And your top three photos there, two of them are pinned. Or one is you being the professional athlete. The other is you embracing Sam. And that's the other piece of your life. And then obviously the third and most important piece, which kind of goes with the whole family, is Leo. And I was thinking like, wow, that's really interesting because those are three very huge jobs um, yes. to be a wife, to be a mother, to be a professional athlete. And yeah, like just thinking about balancing all of those things. I'm not a female. So there's things that I will, <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be able to truly understand. But from what I'm hearing from you, it's like, yeah, that's, it's a super intense thing. So I, I want to know, you know, you're giving some of this advice and you have this on, burden on your heart to share just the difficulties. Um, and it sounds like from a perspective of hopefully helping others to be built up to totally. prepare for this type of a thing. So what are some of the practical things that you've learned on how to combat that resist- resentment? Because you can't not be resentment because everything Probably. has seasons and timing and there's different things that are affected. But what are some of the tools that you've kind of honed and and built to get through those hard times from a relationship standpoint? Yeah. So um, the biggest thing is like, and, and I know this sounds so common, but like you have to communicate like it, it is so, and your partner, like, has to almost like work on themselves as well to not take things personally. Like, you know, you have to know, Hey, my wife is sleep deprived. My wife is, um, you know, breastfeeding or, you know, home all day. 
Um, my wife isn't able to work out like she used to, or she's not going into the office, like whatever, right? Like you really have to take step a step back as the partner and be like, okay, this isn't about me, but am I helping the way that I could be to make things easier for her? And so like Mm -hmm. with Sam, you know, I more had to say, Hey, these are the things that I need help with because, you know, he, like sometimes people just don't know what you need, right? Like, okay, for Laura, it's important if I take out the trash without her asking or, you know, whatever, I put my clothes away. I don't know, just simple things, but like it makes a huge, it's a huge help. Um, mm-hmm. So I feel like being on the same page with your partner is like huge, huge, because when this little person comes into your life, like it's not about you and your partner anymore. It's like, no, no, we have to like, you know, give everything to this baby, but we also have to keep our love and our connection strong. Mm. You know, we don't want to lose that. And a big thing for me is I didn't want to just exist with Sam. Like, you know, oh, he comes home and then it's just like baby, baby, baby. It's like, no, like we need time for him and Mm. I as well. So it's really important to keep your connection with your partner, especially when going through all this stuff this first year. Right. Um, What's another piece of big advice that I can think of? Um, You know, I don't know if it's so much for me, but like, I think more advocating, like I said, the people around you, you know, I understand that, you know, everyone has their certain ways of doing things. But like, when you're a new mom, and you're trying to figure it out, like, of course, I welcome advice. And, you know, I'm reading things or I'm asking, um, I've become like best friends with Aaron. Lionel's wife and thank God I've had her because she has helped me so much on this journey. Um, mm. their baby's like five months ahead of ours. So like I've just kind of been right behind her and she's like, Oh, this mm, is how we did tough. things. And I'm like, Oh, great. Like, you know, perfect. Um, so everyone has their advice. Everyone has their ways of doing things, but like it's just important to respect like how the mom wants to do things, even if you don't agree with it, because mm-hmm. we're trying to figure it out. You know, we're going through hormonal stuff. We're going through all these things like so. just being patient with the mom and being like, hey, that's that seems like a great try. Like, let's try that out or saying like, hey, this is how I used to do things. But, you know, if you want to do it this way, no problem. And, and, you know, you just like do that. Mm -hmm. Um, What stresses like moms out is when, you know, people come in and they're just like, give me the baby and, you know, you should be feeding the baby this and why aren't you eating this and why aren't you do it's like what (laughs) um so yeah that is like more advice for and as a mom you know we're going through all this stuff and not everybody can speak up you know like not everybody is strong enough to be like actually like i want to do it this way or you know Mm -hmm. a lot of moms we just sit there and we're like oh okay but like deep down you're like i don't want to be doing that like what the hell (laughs) um so yeah that's like another pretty hard thing that I had to experience um oh you kind of think what other things you know people kept saying like reach out to other moms and try and like be part of communities I think it's just I don't know you're just so tired that like you don't even have the energy to do that Mm -hmm. but I would push at least to have like some other mom friend because you know thank god I had this like little group because in the middle of the night when we're all up at one o'clock in the morning, we're like texting each other. It's like, mm-hmm. what are you ordering on Amazon? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, what new package? Did, did you find a new breast milk or like, did you find, you know, like what sleeping mechanism have you discovered for the baby? I mean, yeah. that's another business that like I would love to get into because I mean, when you're t- midnight, one o'clock in the morning, you're like scrolling, what helps baby sleep? I mean, oh, yeah. the business is insane. And you're like, I'm like, Sam, I need this. I need this. And he's yeah, like, try all the no, things. Lo- yeah, like cream for the feet that has magnesium. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's totally going to make him go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, Pillar's like, going to start making a baby product. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy. So, yeah, I, I mean, it, those are like the biggest things I would say. I, yeah. I'm sure more things will come up, but for now, yeah. No, I think those are huge. And it, uh, I was kind of 
drawing some parallels as you were talking, especially you kind of told the story where Leo, you left him at the baby care center there for the first time and his fierce independence. And then you were talking about um, you and Sam, like your relationship doesn't need just to be coexisting. It needs to be kind of thriving and building that love. And I, I've heard some of some studies and maybe I'll have to try to put them in the show notes, but I can't quote them directly. But essentially it's the fact that what kids need most is to see that their parents love each other. And I think that breeds confidence in in a child's independence. Um, And there's outliers here and there, of course, but I think that that it really is so important. And that's really cool to hear that uh, little Leo is getting that confidence to be able to go out and, you know, want to figure it out. But I'm curious um, because you've seen him now grow up for a year and he's starting to show a lot more personality and, you know, become him his own thing. What's the split like between you and Sam and the characteristics that you're seeing uh, in him? Well, okay, so he's, he loves to eat. He's a fantastic <laughs> okay. eater. Yeah. So, I mean, anything you put in front of him, he is not picky. He is just like really? towing all the time. I'm like, what in the world? This guy's got to have a metabolism that's awesome. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And then, like I said, like he's very independent. He's very curious. You know, he's constantly... Like I took him to the kids center right away. He's like looking at all the toys and just kind of goes on his own exploring. He loves to like walk around the house constantly. Um, so I don't know where he really gets, maybe that's more from Sam. Um, we're both like kind of independent people. We like, you know, kind of being on our own and I'm trying to think like what other, yeah, he, he's a very happy baby. Like he's always mm-hmm. smiling. It's rare that he has like, some crazy tantrums i don't know I'm, i guess they say that happens like around two but the he terrible seems twos. like yeah like he just seems very happy he's um you know let me think what else is he doing he it, it's funny so sam like you know he'll always kiss me before he leaves and like most of the time when he comes home unless he's like all sweaty i'm like oh okay yeah, <laughs> and so like now I see Leo and he like tries to give us a kiss and I'm like oh that's cute yeah he's um, picking up the he, habits yeah and um yeah he's very loving he's very warm you know he not a big cuddler he doesn't like want to cuddle too much you know he comes he gives you your hug and then he's like okay that's enough mom maybe he gets that a little bit from me you know yeah. I'm more kind of like oh, okay like that's good <laughs> yeah um so it's just starting to come out. So it's not like I can say, Ooh, this is Sam. This is me, but it's starting. I'm starting to see those traits a little bit. Um, yeah. he loves the bike. So if Sam's like in the oh, garage awesome. and he's like working on his derailleur or whatever, and he's like spinning it. Oh, it's, Leo's just like staring at it, you know, yeah. and what we're, we're walking, anybody sees on a bike, he's like, is that my dad? Is that my dad? Like, yeah. where's my dad? <laughs> um, oh, that's so cool. So yeah, he's starting to kind of pick up on things, but I, I can't, I don't know if there's anything like super specific yet. Yeah. Yeah. It, it'll come for sure. So it'll, as a way, yeah. as a way to foreshadow then, um, I'd love to dive into a little bit about who you are in terms of like what made you who you are. So going back okay. to like childhood and maybe that could foreshadow and we could listen to this later as, as Leo's turn into three and four and see if maybe some of these characteristics come out. But for you, like, tell me a little bit about your growing up, because obviously you're an athlete. Um, you love that. It's a huge part of your life. But what were you like growing up? What were you like as a kid? Okay, so um, when I was born, uh, my dad was actually working in Africa for like three years. So he wasn't around a lot during that time. So my mom would take me to Italy and I'd spend time with the family there. And you know, I kind of grew up in that environment. Um, that's how I learned how to speak the other languages. And then um, my parents got divorced when I was about four. So I grew up mostly just with my mom and with my grandpa at the time. And then my mom and I moved to California when I was, I would say, like about 10 to Orange County mm-hmm. and um, grew up with my stepdad, Les. And uh, he's another guy that people have been seeing a lot on the course now at races um because he's like so yo 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 fan (laughs) yeah (laughs) um so grew up with them in california um my mom like constantly was putting me in different sports like it's never that she was like hey you're gonna play you know soccer or this one sport and we're dedicating everything like and i think that was actually really good i've read a lot of like research on stuff like that that you want your kids in different sports just to 
kind of diversify. Um, so I did like swimming and cross country and basketball and soccer and like just everything. Um, and, and then in high school, you know, I was super involved. I was student body president. I, uh, mm-hmm. was on, uh, varsity swimming and did cross country and again, like super athlete. Um, uh, and then I came to Tucson. So my dad lived in Tucson. And so I wanted to go to the University of Arizona, start to kind of like build a closer relationship with him. Um, and so came here, did like the master swimming here, uh, got a bachelor's of science in psychology and did pre-law, you know, thought, oh, I want to go to law school. But then I was uh-huh. like, no, um, I was dating this guy at the time that had to do physical therapy for his back. And so I started going with him to physical therapy and uh, I was like, oh, I really like this. You know, this seems really cool. The rehab side. Um, but I didn't want to go to PT school. So I met this guy that uh, kind of took me under his wing and opened his own facility and basically taught me rehab through his own lens. Um, a lot of like back rehab and stuff like that. And uh, then I kind of got into triathlon and you know, took that path. Like, I, I wouldn't say that school, I did well in school, but I wasn't like, oh, I got to study all the time and like, you know, mm-hmm. want to be in my books and stuff like that. I definitely was more like, I want to go outside and play and, you know, go run around in the forest when I'd be in Italy and go to the beach with my friends. And like, I was more that type of person. Um, I didn't think like, gosh, childhood, I haven't even really thought of it but you know what's so interesting is actually when you have a baby like sam and i took leo to the zoo in germany after his race and i was mm-hmm. like oh this is so cool like look at the zebras and the lion and like you almost like forget being a kid and, and mm-hmm. you get to like be a kid again and yeah. so then you like remember things like oh i used to go to you know i we had like season passes through high school going to disneyland and we'd always like go over to disneyland and go on the rides you know in eighth and high school um so it like jo- you start jogging your memory again of like things you used to do um yeah. i feel like my personality is very like you know playful and giddy and i am a very happy go lucky person it's just with the sleep deprivation and all this change like i feel like it's kind of shut me down a little bit so i'm definitely mm. trying to find that part of me again yeah um but yeah uh I mean, I, I would say like that's kind of my story in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, that was I, pretty I, quick. Yeah, like I traveled a lot growing up. I was very fortunate of that. My mother is half Turkish, so she took me to Istanbul a lot to see my family there. I mean, yeah. very, very culture diverse. I wouldn't say that like I grew up the American way, like definitely not. I mean, yeah. my parents constantly, you know, whether it's the different languages or you know, um, Italian tra- traditions during holidays or, um, stuff like that. We definitely have a huge European side. Mm-hmm. Um, I think like a lot of things I've learned through the culture is like, especially with Italian and Turkish culture, you know, the women take care of the house and the family and, you know, they're constantly cleaning and stuff like, and cooking and stuff like that. And like, I feel like I've kind of embraced those traits. Um, I'm trying to think like, what else? Well, so let, let me, let me interject for yeah. just a second. So Ask on the, me. on the context of, uh, of being cultured, I guess we'll call it. Okay. So when I went for the first time abroad, I was nine. I went to India. Um, okay. And then oh, wow. I had the opportunity to go to some other countries since. And every time I went, it's always interesting because you have these kind of rose colored glasses on and you're absorbing this new place in a completely different lens and mindset. And even the trees may be a little bit differently, but by and large, it's like it's just another place on earth. But for totally. whatever reason, because the culture is different, the people are different, the smells are different. Um, it really does change how I view things. So from you as a kid, how do you think that being exposed to these different cultures, like you said, Turkish and Italian, and then obviously there's some American standard in there and it's all mixed together. How has that influenced the way that you just, I mean, approach life? And we talked a little bit about the cleaning and that kind of stuff yeah, and yeah, like yeah. you've taken on those tra- traits, which is awesome. But 
yeah, you, you seem very open-minded. So that's one thing I would say is like, you, you're very open to new experiences, it seems, but other ways that you think it maybe it has that kind of affected the way that you chew and understand and process life. Yeah, I know. Totally. Um, actually, so that's a very good question because, um, I know Sam has said like multiple times, he's like, I love traveling with you because, you know, if we go to a different country or a different place and it's like, you know, a different culture, different food, different, um, way they do things, you know, when we were in Istanbul, it's like the mosque is having the, the it's ringing every five times a day and everyone stops and starts praying. Like, you know, I feel like some people, they're kind of like, Oh, whoa, like that's weird. Or like, Oh, this food's kind of, but like, I'm so, like you said, like so open to it and embracing it. I like try to think about how their culture is. And I'm like, Oh, like, okay. Muslim, like, this is how they function. You know, this is how they think. And so when you go there, it's like, you're just so much more understanding. And I feel like welcoming to their culture versus right away, like judging, oh, the women are completely covered and like, can't show themselves. And it's like, oh, wow, that really sucks. They must be so hot. Instead, I'm like, oh, like, okay, that's really cool. Like, that's how they respect themselves. And that's how they go about their lives. Or, um, you know, when I would spend my summers in Italy, I actually would cry when I'd have to come home, my mom would send me for like three months. And I remember like, I'd come home and I'd be like, so sad. And I'd be like, Oh, I want to wear my Italian clothes and like, you know, be Italian and be on the, with my friends there. And it's just like, it's such a different lifestyle because I feel like the American lifestyle is so fast paced and, you know, we're constantly like, we have everything here. We have, it's so funny. This, past trip it's like okay we come home and sam's like oh my god like thank god we have an ice machine because when we were in italy guess what there's no ice there's no ac it's so hot you're like sweating all the time and my dad would go to the store and buy packs of ice just so we could put it like in our water you'd like keep packs of ice in the freezer <laughs> and mm-hmm. it's like okay one ice cube because we gotta make it laugh wow um, so it's just such a you know, or like in Turkey, you know, you take showers in these like small little tubs that they don't have the shower head. It's like you're, I think maybe in India it was the same. I'm not sure, but like you're, you know, doing this and yeah. people are like, oh, this sucks. But it's like, oh no, like this is cool. This is like how they live. Right. So yeah. I think like I'm just so much better at embracing it. And I actually feel like fascinated by it, you know, um, cause we are spoiled here. I mean, you have everything here. You have your automatic cars. You have, you can go to fast food if you're starving the store right away. Boom. You know, but like over there, if you're hungry, you know, they have their lunch hour where everyone goes and takes a nap for three hours yeah. and so the stores are closed and you know, it's just different. Um, yeah. Yeah. It didn't know it totally is different. So I lived in the Philippines for a year. Um, they're in oh, college. That's cool. And yeah, so that was a, a huge shift for me in life and, and just in a lot of things, mentally, spiritually, uh, physically even. And one of the things that it reminded me of that, as you said, that, you know, in America, it's so fast paced. And I think that lends itself or at least as an excuse or not an excuse, but a consequence of going to Walmart and being able to buy anything that you want uh, kind of yes. robs the opportunity for personal connection. For example, like I would go to the local market and there was a lady that made her own peanut butter and, you know, any of these different types of foods that you wanted to buy, there was usually some kind of a specialty person or even a specialty store that carried that yeah. particular item, especially stuff that is more American, like, you know, totally. peanut butter. Um, and so like when I was there, I would go every week and I got to know this lady and her friends just because I, she was like my peanut butter lady and I'd go and buy that totally. stuff. And, and that Isn't affords that awesome? a lot of different, yeah, it affords a lot of different uh, interactions and opportunities to get to know people and, Yeah, when you're living so fast, I mean, we go to Walmart, I even noticed because I live in an area or lived in an area that was very populated with one group of types of people where we all kind of on the same lane, same mindset. And I would go to these public places like Walmart and I'd be like, oh, I don't even want to see anybody because everybody knows everybody. I just want to get in and get my stuff or whatever. Um, But then that robs me of the opportunity of building those relationships. So I think that's a huge piece of it. So I am not, I took a, a 23 and me thing. I am five oh, percent okay. Sicilian. I thought I was way more Italian because oh, wow. my mother's full Italian. Okay. Um, but anyway, I'm like most Northwestern European. But it's interesting to hear some of those old stories from my grandmother and great grandmother of 
you know, just the low, slower pace life. I haven't really experienced it much, but it is true that I think we go a little too fast. And there's yes. give and take to it, but yeah. Well, even like when we were in Italy just now, I mean, there would literally be times where Sam's like, I'm bored. And I'm like, what? Yeah. You're bored? You're bored? <laughs> like sitting in this beautiful vineyard, you can see the water from our house. Like, just like be in silence, like with yourself. And he, and then it took him like a couple of days because he's very good about like being spiritual and meditating and stuff like that. And then once he kind of got all over the I'm bored, he was like, wow, this is like really nice to just be able to sit here and like not have anything to do. Like, you yeah. know, because all the grandmas and the aunts are cooking lunch. It's, you know, you don't really have to do a lot and you're just kind of chilling. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and you do miss, you, you forget that because like here, like you said, it's so fast paced that sometimes you almost become like so robotic, you know, it's like, okay, I wake up, I go do my workout, then I go mm -hmm. to the store, then I do this. And it's just like, you're not even almost like thinking, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, we're, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, we're pretty habitual creatures for sure. It's interesting. Yes. Um, so it sounds like obviously you have added a lot of, uh, zest or, um, yeah, I will say zest to Sam's life because you had come from this very different, it sounds like from what he came from. So what has he given you perspective on as you've been, you guys are married now, correct? Not yet. December. You're not married yet. Okay. Engaged. Getting in December. Okay. Engaged. Yeah. So you know each other. Married, but yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you guys have known each other for a while. What are some of the things and perspectives that he's given you that have caused you to stop and maybe think or think, oh, maybe there's a different approach to this? Oh my gosh, that's a, that's a, that's tough a pretty question. hard question. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I gotta think about that. Um, I think, I think him growing up with so many siblings and me growing up as an only child, I, you know, never had somebody interrupting the things that, like, you know, the way that I would do things, um, whether it's like being very organized or clean or having my own space. And, you know, he constantly had to like share and, constantly have people invading his space and all those kind of things and so it's kind of it's really helped me like just relax and be like okay you know if Sam wants to do something his way that's okay you know like mm -hmm. it's not the end of the world you know maybe that'll be better and most of the time I'm like oh yeah that that totally makes sense like I wish I would have done that um so it's definitely helped me be more open with just kind of life in general um I'm trying to think like how a, a big way with Leo actually was I was so crazy about how protective I was with Leo like especially in the beginning I mean I probably only let my mom my dad and maybe a couple friends like really come in and be close and like help me yeah. um and so he now like as Leo's gotten older especially this past month he's like okay Laura you know I want you to try and get out of the house. Like, let's try and just see how the kid center goes for an hour. Like, and I'm like, no, 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 we're not doing daycare. Like I'm doing this myself. I don't care. But the sleep deprivation got so bad these past three weeks. Thank God he's sleeping now again. Um, that yeah. he was like, you really have to just try and be open and like just an hour. Like, let's just try. And I'm like, okay. You know, so he kind of pushes me out mm -hmm. of my comfort zone quite a bit, you know, like, He's like, it's going to be okay. You know, like, I'll go with you. Like, let's just, it, it'll be fine. Like, I'm here. And I'm like, okay, like, yeah, let's try it. He is going to be okay. And, you know, if anything happens, I'll call Brandon and we'll clean it up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, hey, like, you know, I'll help you with this situation. Um, I call him like the magic doctor because, you know, if something comes up, I'm like, hey, like, you know, help me understand like why this is happening. And then we'll work through it. And then I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I feel better. Um, yeah. So, I feel like, you know, Sam really has pushed me with just not being so rigid and like just being able to relax and, you know, let different things happen. And yeah, I guess, does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes sense. Yeah, okay. it's interesting to me, like, because, you know, I'm thinking of this concept of you're talking about, which I've noticed with a lot of my friends being 31, 32, like a lot of my friends are having children now or have two yeah. children. And I have observed from the outward this just intense desire or it's, I don't even know if you can label it as a desire, but instinct for a mother to protect her child. And yeah. some, some women it comes across as like very intense, like 
Don't yeah. come near my baby. Don't breathe on my baby. Um, and other, and it's different for every mom in a different way. But it reminds me of like a mother bear and her cubs. Like it's here in the yeah, mountains of Tennessee. Totally. Like if there's cubs, you don't never go near the mom because yeah, she might be snap wolf. at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so there's that. But what's also interesting too is you're talking about the sleep deprivation. So for myself, like. Um, I've gone through some crazy stuff when I was younger and okay. when I get kind of mentally unbalanced, I get really mentally unbalanced and usually yeah. there's sleep deprivation involved. Obviously, I'm not going to compare it to the level that you've no, gone no, through. No, but it doesn't but, matter. Like it's, it's intense. For yeah. Sure. And, it, okay. and it, it's crazy because I have to like write myself a note down sometimes even physically and remind myself like, okay, this problem whenever i'm sleep deprived looks so big like it is yeah. massive but then when i get a little sleep it, it really comes back down to perspective and the stress kind of falls off and i realize like okay like this is a manageable thing but it's, it's just so interesting how when we do lack sleep our brains at least for me seem to inflate what's going on yes. around me and everything seems so much more intense and so much harder to 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 pass yeah. up and to get through i just yeah. And no, it's true. And like, honestly, sometimes it gets to a point where you're like, I, I, I remember there were some nights where I was sitting in the room and like, I would freak myself out that there's like a ghost. I mean, you almost start like hallucinating. Hallucinating. Because you're so, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm like, oh my God, like maybe there's like an evil spirit in this room and that's why it's, Leo can't sleep. I mean, it's like crazy. It's <laughs> up that yeah comes up sometimes and then i'm like sam like you can't sleep in that room we have to switch rooms and sam's like what or like we have to buy a new house like you know <laughs> and you're like oh my god that escalated quickly yeah like you know what? but it's like insane just some of the stuff that comes up and then you're like oh no okay i'm okay you know i'm just having a moment um mm -hmm. but i did i did want to say one other thing so like okay so don't I don't want to say this wrong, but I did grow up like having, I had a beautiful life. I had a mom that loved me with so much love, took the best care of me. She was a single mom. Um, you know, like I said, I had, you know, family around here and there. Um, and she went through a very hard life, like growing up and she was very young. My parents were super young when they had me. Um, and I think that like, you know, there were times in my life where like, it was really bad and things happened and I saw things and I and, and you know with Sam's growing up he was very sheltered he you know mm. didn't really experience bad things and you know his parents kind of I don't want to say like lived delusionally but like it was kind of like this different mindset okay and so because I had to go through hard times and like you know, uh, it was like me and my mom. I think it makes a mother's perspective with her child a little bit different because mm. we've seen bad stuff and we've seen people who are in families or whatever hurt other, like, you know, you've seen yeah. stuff and you've experienced stuff. And so that's where that more intense maybe protection comes from. Mm -hmm. Whereas Sam, or whatever, like another person who hasn't gone through those things, they're like, oh, no, like, what do you mean? You know, why would somebody do that? Or like, oh, like, that wouldn't happen. Why would you think that? And it's like, no, no, like, this stuff does happen, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I do think that, like, sometimes that can actually be a conflict for two parents if they're coming from two extremes because the other person's like, well, why don't you just chill out? You know, it, everything's going to be fine. And it's like, well, because these things have happened or, yeah. you know, whatever. Right. So that's like another thing that can also be kind of touched on, I guess, or yeah, it, it, hard. Yeah. 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 No, no, for sure. Yeah. It reminds me of um, it just to be completely open honest because it, it brought it to mind. So when I was younger, there was a lot of sexual abuse within our family and yeah getting over or getting to an age where you know I've gone to therapy and talked about that and I used to like I don't know it's like I have this in a sense of heightened awareness around certain types of people like if I get a totally. bad feeling like even and sometimes I'm wrong but I'd rather trust that gut than not trust yeah. it because especially now some of my friends are having kids I'm like yep. overly like oh that's a bad 
person. Like don't, yes. don't go to that yes. person, keep your kids close. And it's sad that you have to think that way. But I think that when you do go through things like, yeah, you have that intense kind of like bunny ears to toward those types of things, which can make life difficult. But it's, I think it all comes from a point of protection, like in care and you want to navigate the, that intense stuff. So yeah, it's interesting yeah. how that, how that stuff happens. And it's hard too, because, you know, I was thinking as you were saying that as well, when I have a kid, like I didn't grow up with much um, and I'll have the opportunity to give my children just monetarily a much different life. Yes. But at the same time, it's like, if I go on one extreme, you know, they they could end up on the streets forever. And if I go to the other extreme, they right. could be spoiled brats and never have any good friends and, you know, just be like trust fund baby. And, you know, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that's it type of a thing. Finding that so, balance. Yeah. It, which is really difficult to do because I've seen a lot of my friends grow up on both sides of those spectrums and not everybody goes in the same path. So yeah, parenting. Yeah, I'll have no, to call you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll keep you posted of how things are going. But yeah. no, I mean, it, it totally, yeah, it's definitely something that you have to think about. And, you know, I feel like, I don't, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed this because I feel like you're pretty similar to me as in like, you're very in tune with your feelings. Like, mm. you know, if a situation comes up, instead of like reacting right away, you're probably like, oh, okay, like, why is this happening? You know, you, you, like you, yeah. you process and think, right? And so we feel things in our body. Like if I'm around someone and I feel, off it's like there's a reason for that right mm -hmm. i don't know if it's about that person or about me but there's a reason right. um so we're like heightened aware and so what i've noticed is that, is that like so many people function uh from their like this like neck up right yeah. like people don't feel anymore and so people like us <laughs> you know we are heightened and people are like oh you're being crazy like you're being too much and it's like and usually we're right, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you say something and, and then later, a year later, it, people are like, oh yeah, that person, it was off. And it's like, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what we said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So no. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. The body has a, the ability to remember things too. Cause so when my dad passed away when I was 16 and okay. it was like a year later and for whatever reason i couldn't remember the date for many years but my body would remember because they would come up and i'd be like i just feel terrible i feel kind of depressed and i call my mom she's like what well, do you know what day it is and it's interesting how the body has the ability to remember even when the mind yeah. kind of like blows things out so yeah the mind is definitely powerful totally so, yeah. so is the body yeah yeah the body is yeah, like body, that's what, yeah. it, it's telling you everything if you really sit down and listen it's like oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. So let's change gears here a little bit. Okay. Um, we touched on, I think briefly, you said a few things that alluded to the fact that spirituality is meditation is a part of how you approach life. So what is your worldview on spirituality, religion and stuff like that? Okay, so I wouldn't say that I'm so much the meditator. I feel like Sam's more like down that path. Um, but I will say that uh, I grew up in a Catholic church. Um, I, I went to private school all my life till college. Uh, so we went to church once a week. Um, I, I, you know, we just baptized Leo. That was super important for me and, mm -hmm. you know, Sam as well. I do feel like there is a higher person. I don't know whether that's God or, you know, whoever, but I know that there is a stronger force out there. Um, I know like, you know, with the work that I do with Brandon, like it's all, it's a lot about feeling your body and feeling different things that come up and then, you know, kind of figuring out why. Um, so, you know, I did try to start going to church again, especially when this postpartum depression started really mm -hmm. hitting me. And I was like, I just need something like, you know, let me just try this. The problem is, is that I feel now, you know, when you do go to church, um, it's like they're telling you how you need to believe and what you need to do and, you know, how you need to live and act. And that's not like really what I'm looking for. It's more just like, you know, saying, hey, you know, whatever higher force there is, like they're going to take care of you and they're going to protect you and you need to trust that. Like, that's mm -hmm. more of kind of what I look for. Um, I'd say like a lot of my spiritual kind of happens when I work out, you know, I, I don't try, I try not to bring like headphones and stuff and just like be with my thoughts and my feelings and 
you're out in nature, especially like where we live, we're out of the city. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wouldn't say that there's like a specific, oh, we're Catholic. This is how we do things every Sunday. We're going to church, this and that. But I do feel that with Leo, like I do want to expose him to the Catholic church because I do feel growing up in that environment did help me. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you have this small community and, you know, everyone's like loving and supportive and stuff like that. But, uh, I wouldn't say that there's like one specific thing. thing. Yeah. 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 No, that's fair. (laughs) Yeah. And it's interesting too. I think that, I mean, I'm, I'm on the same lines, um, when I have kids like exposing them to, for me, it was like Christianity, a bit different, yeah. I think, than probably how I experienced it. Like we're Seventh Adventists, like we go to church on Saturday. Okay. Um, I observe the Sabbath, so one day a week, like complete rest and take off from work and things like that. Um, but it's interesting within our culture right now, there's a shift going on. I don't know if you've noticed it, but I consume a lot of broad spectrum types of content on the internet um, okay. in terms of like okay. podcasts and thought leaders. And there's this idea of cultural Christianity that's coming back into the mainstream and like this swing away from like the extreme, I hate to even say like the world liberalism, but just secularism in general. Um, And I think there's, there's a place for like the separation of church and state. And I I do believe in all those things because some of the most evil things are, I would say probably even the most evil things ever done um, on the face of the earth have been under the, under the banner of a religion. Um, Because when people are, are, zealous toward a belief or an ideal we're willing to throw away moral belief and just be i don't know if incredulous is the right word but just like horrible under the guise of those banners but at the same time i think there's something to be said about like the the foundational beliefs and ideals of treat your neighbor as yourself like the golden rule type of situation um and just being kind in general and that's becoming more popular in some of these other wackadoodle ideas of just like things that were never sustainable when they were presented to the public yeah yeah um it's like well clearly that's not going to work out but i think that it will be a good opportunity for a lot of people to kind of search through personally and figure out like huh what do i believe in what is this higher power if there is one and why do i believe in it what what does that make a difference um yeah any any thoughts well, I, I, I love like actually learning about different religions and different beliefs because you never know if like somebody shares something about, you know, their religion or how they practice. You're like, ooh, that kind of resonates with me. Like, I want to explore that more. And I feel like, I mean, you know, I don't know totally how your podcast works, but what would be awesome is just being able to talk about anything because, Mm -hmm. you know, I feel that so many things are so censored now, you know, you can't say your actual deep opinion because you're going to offend all these people or, you know, they're like, Oh, okay. I'm not going to follow her anymore because she believes this. It's like, actually, instead of being so closed minded, maybe you can learn something from why I believe something like that, or, you know, maybe I'm curious for you to share, you know, like be open and say, Hey, this is what I practice or what I believe Mm -hmm. because I want to learn. And it's like this culture has gone in this direction where it's like, Nope, it's my way. This is how we do things. And if you believe that I don't want you in my life or you're a crazy person or whatever. And it's like, how did we get there? Like, how did we get to a place where even if you're in a restaurant and you start talking about politics and somebody over there, hears you or the person's like oh hey like don't talk so loud you know it's people it's like what yeah like what i don't get it yeah i know it's super interesting i was just listening to a podcast this morning uh with joe rogan and andrew huberman um and andrew huberman was sharing some of these statistics about studies that have been done on people who are what we would call psychotic or crazy or whatever and it's usually what they found out amongst like the people who would uh, commit evil just for the sake of committing evil. It's like tends to be about 10 ish percent of the population and they kind of ruin it for everybody else. Um, yeah. But it's interesting because a lot of these uh, mainstream ideas that are going to been pushed out in like the woke culture and whatnot, yeah. it's like, that's not even a grand majority. It's not even like I would consider I a minority of people that I get shared with. And then there's I, these ideas of like diversity, equity, and inclusion, but we all uh, paint that as to mean like color, but you can yeah. have uh, 
20 different skin tones in the room and they all be on the same track and mindset. And so like, that's totally. not diverse a- at all. So like diversity yeah. really is diversity of thought, a diversity of belief, a diversity of experience. And like, that's what truly brings to the table. I think like the, the true, what America could, should, and I guess has been somewhat in the past. I haven't lived through it, but like the melting pot of ideas and beliefs and, and things yeah. like that. And then that's not to say that you shouldn't stand on, or I shouldn't stand on like what I truly believe and am convicted of, totally. but, but writing off someone just because it's uncomfortable. I think that could be, yes. yeah, that or could it's be really like dangerous. Challenging your beliefs and you don't like that. It's like, I mean, how do you ever grow or like yeah. learn? And, and yeah. you know, that's a big thing with Sam and I in our relationship. Like I want him to challenge me and I want him to push me beyond my comfort zone because that is the only way I'm going to grow. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I might get pissed off for a second or fight him on it for a second, but keep pushing me because that's how I become a better person, right? And I learn like more about me, you know, instead of being like, oh, he's, you know, being mean or whatever. It's like, no, no, like he's actually trying to help me, you know? Um, Yeah. So, yeah. I was going to say, who hasn't yelled in anger after a really hard effort? Like it's that yeah. thing that is so uncomfortable and painful. I think athletes understand that more than anyone else. Yeah, it's those things sure. that end up growing us and get us to the next rung of whatever it is, strength, power, understanding, enlightenment, yes. whatever you want to coin it. Yeah. yeah so, so when I uh, gave birth with Leo, I was so stubborn in my head. Okay. I was like, I don't want any medical I wanted to go to the hospital because I didn't feel totally secure with myself to like do a home birth or anything like that. So I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I am going to go to the hospital. But like, I was so hardcore. Like I was like, Sam, I don't want any medical intervention. I don't want any epidurals. I don't want like, do not let them try and do anything. Okay. Wow. And he was like, okay, I, I got it. Laura. And I remember like, 10 it was like 11 p.m and we had been going since like four in the morning and Um, things were intense and i was like nine so you dilate to 10 centimeters and i remember i was like 9.5 centimeters okay and it took like two hours to get to 10 and i was like okay um, like that's it i'm i need the epidural like i'm done and she was like no no like you said no you got this like come on and i'm like oh fuck like okay (laughs) it's like a workout session yeah Oh my God. And and the, I remember the doctors coming in and they're like, Laura, you're the only person on this floor that doesn't have an epidural. Like you can do this. And I'm like, Oh fuck yeah. Like, let's go. Oh my gosh. You know? Like what? That's yeah. crazy. So it's like, I mean, it's just crazy. Like, you know, you, you, you want your partner to like, Hey, this is what you want, Laura. Like we can do this, you know, I, you got this. Like, yeah. Yeah. Holy cow. So you, you did the entire birth without epidural or anything? Yes. Nothing, no medical intervention. I, wow. Like, I'm kind of, I, you know, I'm all about the hospitals and stuff when you need them sure. and it's emergency, but like, I'm not really a big, uh, I don't know, medicine and stuff like that person. I like more of the holistic approach and stuff yeah. like that. So I was like, I don't want any of that shit and don't try and, you know, like, don't give force it. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and great. and I remember Sam was like, okay, because he's, uh, he's like kind of like me, but not totally. Yeah. And so he's like, are you sure, Lori? I'm like, no, don't want it. Don't let it, you know, you need to watch everyone. So, yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. good for you. That's that's crazy. It's so funny you said that because my best friend, he's down the road like five miles and his wife just had their second baby at home birth and she does it all natural. And yep. I was like, wow, are you crazy? Good for oh, you. Oh, good for her. Yeah. I think yeah. actually if we have another baby, I think I would do home birth. I really, really do because, yeah, I mean, yeah, the hospital is great for emergencies and don't get me wrong. Like I know people are totally against it because they're like, well, if you're a baby, like has a struggle, you know, we live five minutes from a hospital. So yeah, you can, it's, we're in a yeah. good place. But like, you know, you go in the hospital and the, when the baby's born, like the mother just wants to hold their child. Like, you know, you just want to be with them. And instead it's like they got to take the baby and measure the baby and weigh the baby and do all these things. And then they give you the baby and then they want to take the baby. And it's like, can you just let me be with my child? Yeah, it's kind like, of traumatic. Yeah, I think mean, you're there for 24 hours. Every hour they're coming in, they have to do like some uh, hearing tests and prick tests on their heel and blah, blah, blah. And I did all my research because I was like, what is mandatory and what is not mandatory? And when you try and come in and be like, oh, this is mandatory, I'm like, no, it's not. Like, leave me alone. 
it's like you can't even relax because you're on wow. like this defense the whole time. Wow. So I do. I I think I would probably stay home. You know, you're in your home. You're comfortable. You can just kind of lay there and be with your child. You have nurses that you've hired to come and you know people around you. Like, what better place to have a child? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I applaud yeah. your best friend's wife. <laughs> Yeah, I mean she's Good job, a, Mama. <laughs> yeah, her name's Sarah. She's uh she's she's okay. a force to be reckoned with by any by I any like means. Her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really awesome. Yeah, get a midwife, everybody, and do your home births. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um totally. a couple more questions for you. Okay. Your life has taken some pretty drastic turns. Um not necessarily bad, is not what I'm saying, but like it's changed a, a lot over the years. So how totally. has your definition of success for you as a person? Because I imagine at one point it was like maybe world, win a world championship or win a certain race or do something like that. And now it's, you know, you have a child and you're partnering with Sam. What, had, what and how has your definition of success changed since you started, especially now that you do have this, the kid in the picture? Yeah. Um, so I feel that one huge thing that determines success is, like I mentioned before in the podcast, being able to have that connection with your partner, especially when bringing a child into the world uh, and into your relationship. I mean, I can't tell you like how many relationships I've seen that the parents just kind of separate. And I'm not judging any moms or parents of how you raise your babies, but like, you know, there's families that their kids all sleep in the bedroom and you know, which is fine. Like literally a mom will do anything she can to just get sleep. So I get it. But yeah. like, you know, you, keeping that connection with my partner is huge, 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 huge. Like your relationship is so challenged during those times that like it, it, staying close, I feel like is a huge definition of success. Mm. Um, I feel like, let's see. I guess with myself, um, just giving that hundred percent with Sam, um, and his career is super important to me and like success for me because I know like, you know, little things of like jealousy or resentment can start to kind of come in and be like, damn, like, I wish I would have seen what I could do in triathlon or I wish Mm -hmm. I was out on my bike for three hours or, you know, doing that. And instead, I've really worked hard to change that. And actually, it's like so cool because now, I mean, when Sam comes home and he's like, hey, Laura, like your mom's here. Is there any chance you can come to the pool and film me? And, you know, we can look at the and I'm like, hell yeah. Like, you know, let's help your swim. And, you know, I get to these races and you would think that I'm like his coach and this psycho person because I'm like, all right, grandma, take Leo. Like, you know, I feel like I'm racing, too, because like yeah okay i'm not doing the training that he's doing but like i'm doing the hard preparation on the other side to get him to the race so i almost feel like we're racing together and so mm-hmm. yeah okay if he doesn't win that's not what i'm saying success is but like if he has breakthroughs or you know an, another step to help to help him to get closer to you know being on top or winning the championship or whatever that's a that's success for me you know yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. Like, of course there's hard times and it's not like rainbows and butterflies all the time at home, but like being able to say, okay, I gave a hundred percent and Sam saying I gave a hundred percent to my training and this is what we got. Like, that's huge. Um, you know, you have to, I have to put a lot of my ego and my selfishness to the side Hmm. and, you know, do these things. And, you know, Sam comes home and, yeah, do you think like after a five hour bike ride and an hour run, the guy wants to lay on the couch and watch Netflix? Of course he does. But he's like, no, like I have a child. Laura's not a single mom and I need to help, you know? Yeah. So we're both like being able to be such a strong team. Like that is success, you know? Um, and I remember Sam told me the other day, he's like, Hey, if I never win a world championship or like I never win Kona, I don't think that I wasn't successful. You know, mm-hmm. like I still think that like everything that I've learned about who I am and who I've become and this even this father that I've become like that is success. Right. You know, people attach like these these um 
what's the word? Like they attach these medals or these final things to what success is. Like, okay, if mm-hmm. I won Kona, I was the most successful. But guess what? They they ignore everything they did to get to that yeah. point. Then they get there and it's like, okay, now what? Like yeah. that you're still not happy. You're looking for the next thing. Yeah. And with Sam, it's like, and with me, we're at a place where like, hey, in Germany, yeah, he finished 23rd. But guess what? That was a successful day for us. You know, we prepared the w- best way that we could. Mm. He gave what he could. He, you know, he stayed strong out there for his son to be a good example. Hey, like, you know, when things are hard, I'm not going to give up. Right. Yeah. Um, so those are like, I feel like my new success, successful things. <laughs> yeah. Your su- success parameters. Yeah. And then I, it's so funny, obviously like Leo's too little, but I've heard this really awesome quote, um, from Instagram. I can't, it was from like a billionaire or something. And the guy said, Hey, like you have all the money in the world. Is that like what makes you happy? And the guy said, or is that what makes you feel successful? And the guy says, no, you know what success is. And he's like, it's when your kids are grown and they want to hang out with you and they mm. want to be with you and they want to be around man. you. Yeah. Wow. Yes. And I was like, how many people do you know where the holidays come and it's almost like you're dreading, oh, you my parents, stress. like they're forcing me to go do this and they're doing, and like, yeah. I want it to be with Leo and if we have another kid, hey, like, I want to go to see my parents and like, I can't wait for you to come on family vacation because they're like so fun or, you know, whatever, like, yeah. right? I, I, I know friends that like, the kids love going to the Palm Springs house because they love like being with the grandparents and the parents yeah. and it's just a good time. Like it's not stressful. Um, yeah. That down the road will be a successful film for me. And yeah. I, I hope that, you know, I can provide that. But yeah. I'm starting to try and find different things that make me feel success in a different way. Like I, you know, like I shared some, but I'm still trying to discover, okay, what does that mean to me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Um, I'll just quickly share what, like my wife and I married her. So I came from a, a family of me, my two sisters, mom and dad, relatively small, not a whole lot of family get togethers, very broken up family. Um, but okay. then when I married my wife, uh, she has like I can't even remember. I think it's like 10. There's 10 cousins and all. Oh, I thought you were going to say sisters. Or so. like, no, what? no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, she has two brothers, which is cool because okay. I, I have sisters and I, I have okay. I've inherited two brothers. Uh, but there's 10 cousins and, you know, they all come back to this farm in Tennessee in the backwoods, middle of nowhere for holidays. And it was like my first real experience of getting to be part of that family. And it's so funny before yeah. we were even engaged, I was like, because we broke up for like 10 minutes one time and I was so okay. sad that I was losing her, but I was so sad that I was going to lose that family. Lose family. Like that, yeah. yeah. And I realized, yeah. man, that's something I do when I want to build too. Cause yeah, that really, really hit home. That quote that you said, you know, that your kids want to come spend time with you and want to hang out. Like that's, that's a huge thing. And yeah, totally. it's, it's so interesting because and now that I've gotten older, when we're young, looking back at my mom and dad, I'm like, oh, they're idiots. They don't know what they're talking about. But every year I hear my mom's voice and my dad's voice sometimes too echoing back in my ears like, oh, remember, Seth, like if you don't yeah, take care yeah, of this yeah. now, it's going to be a thing when you get married yeah. or it's going to be a thing later in life. And there's a lot of wisdom in that. I wish that I could have like given myself some kind of earlier childhood experiences to get to garner that wisdom and to take those things to heart. But sometimes I guess you just have to learn by the school yeah. of hard knocks, but yeah, that's, that's really, that's really cool to hear those different success uh, parameters that you're building for yourself. Totally. Yes. So one more final question for you. Um, yeah. It's an advice question for the okay. listeners. Um, you have found this new meaning in life and you are to a place where you seem very like content and peaceful Granted, like you said, there's still hard times last week and the week before, like you're working on the sleep deprivation stuff and that is no joke whatsoever. So I don't yeah. say you have it all figured out, but if yeah. somebody is going through something similar or even moms are going through something similar where they're just not able to find a level of peace and contentment, what is some steps that they can take to start to get on that journey to find peace? Okay. So it's a great question because um, it was like three weeks that leo had this um 
sleep regression just now, right? And he had been he okay, so he didn't sleep for nine months. Um, we were it was just rough. Okay, huh. so then from nine to about eleven and a half months before we left for Europe, he started sleeping all night. I started getting myself back together, and I almost like a little bit forgot about how intense the sleep deprivation was. Because then this time around, we come for, so the, like five days before we had left Europe, things started pr- uh, going backwards again with the sleep. And then, um, we got home. I got, I had to pull like two all nighters, uh, just because with the jet lag. And then again, uh, Leo not sleeping, um, two all nighters in a row. Uh, it, it was just like insane. Okay. And I remember, uh, Let's see. So I started sleeping again through the night three days ago, like maybe five days ago. I remember in the middle of the night, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I was like, this is so bad. I was like crying. I remember sitting mm. there in the chair with him in the middle of the night and it, it was just like so painful. Okay. Cause I never pulled all nighters with Leo when he was little. So this was like pretty intense. Um, and, and I remember in that moment, like the biggest thing that you have to do is you have to be able to like change your perception. It Like you can't mm. say, okay, I give up. This is it. I can't do this anymore. Like you, you get to that point and then you really have to be able to like pull yourself out about it and be like, Hey, you know what? Maybe it's going to be a couple more months that Leo's going to want to cuddle with me. And then he's going to be this grown, beautiful boy wanting to do his own thing. So like, enjoy this moment yeah it's hard like yeah you feel like shit yeah you want to jump out a window but like it's it's only a couple more months like you did this for nine months you can do this you know or like i remember at four months it's like so fresh still it things were like super bad again with the sleep and i was like trying i was having pain like breastfeeding and it was like all these things and i remember i remember like texting brandon in the middle of the night, which is like so not okay (laughs) and being like, I need help. And so you have to reach out for help. Like you really, really do because I'm such a stubborn person. And I know that like, I'm like, no, I'm going to do this by myself. Like I got this. And I just kind of like, kind of like, um, not shut down, but you kind of go inside. Right. And you're like, I can do this. I'm going to be fine. And people are like, Hey, Laura, like, how are you doing? And you're like, I'm fine. I'm good. You know, I got this or, okay. And then, you know, another day goes by and they're like, Hey, Laura, like just checking in. I'm fine. I'm good. But like, don't be stubborn. Ask Mm -hmm. for help. Like if you need help, it's okay. Like, you know, reach out to a mom or reach out to, if you can, your parents, anybody, because I think like maybe a fear that we have is I'm going to reach out to that person and then they're going to come in and they're going to try and do things their way or they're not going to listen to Mm -hmm. me because Sometimes all we need is like somebody just to listen. Yeah. Um, so just, yeah, I mean, you, you really have to have the strength to be able to change your mindset and whatever positive thing you can find, whether it's like, Hey, he's only going to be little for a couple more months. Like I can do this or, you know, Leo's going through something and he's trying to communicate with that with you he's not trying to make your life miserable right like he's uncomfortable for a reason so be patient with him like maybe try and feel what's going on instead of getting angry at Mm. him you know because i feel like we get angry at the baby just go to fucking sleep you know Mm -hmm. and it's like they're trying to sleep right yeah so you have to almost like play this like reverse psychology with yourself and be like pull yourself out of that dark space and be like okay no like what's going on or what do I need to do to make the environment better for him? Or is it me being so much anxiety that he's feeling that? Right. Mm, Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I guess that's like a, (laughs) a big lump of advice. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? (laughs) No, I think that's pretty good. I mean, I think the thing that hit home most for me was ask for help. And like something I think that isn't talked about enough when asking for help is if, If we learn how to ask for help in the little stuff, it'll be easier to ask for help in the big stuff. And that's just that same concept of, you know, lifting the lighter weight and then the the heavier weight or with responsibility or whatever it is. And I think that there's opportunities out there that 
we can all take to ask for help on something instead of maybe even asking Google every single time and that (laughs) could help strengthen that muscle. But I think that that's totally fair. And yeah, like, I'm so glad I'm a man. Um, yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing what women do. I think one of the highest callings, if not the highest calling, is being a mother. Uh, and I truly do mean that. Um, and being a father, too, like being parents. And those are those are huge things that, you know, sometimes a lot of us point at the government or at X or Y as the issue. But really, a lot of these issues that I think are reflected in our culture are a reflection of our own selfishness and stuff yeah. like that that comes around and is able to be inflamed so yeah um i think that's good asking for help and that, that's a good way to eventually find that peace and contentment it's it's an ongoing thing you know like like i said i'm a pretty um like i grew up fairly religious and there's these you know bible stories where you know a guy who you know calls down fire from heaven uh from god to burn up like this sacrifice in front of these um, false prophets of Baal, you know, he has yeah. this amazing experience. I don't know if you know that story um, with Elisha, I believe he calls on fire okay. from heaven. It, it like burns up this sacrifice. And then the false prophets of Baal, they're worshiping Satan. Like they call on Satan to bring down fire and, you know, it doesn't happen. So he has this amazing faith experience. But then a few weeks later, there's this evil queen uh, who's coming after him, Jezebel. And cause they're, they want to kill him and he's like running for his life and basically calling on God. Like, why is my life so terrible? This is so hard. Yada, yada, yada. So we all go through these peaks and valleys. And I think that totally. recognizing that is, yeah. is really um, key to our own contentment because sometimes our faith is going to be strong. Sometimes we're going to yeah. have the grit to deal with our children or whatever it is. But other times it's like we're on wind's end and it feels like, the end of everything but asking for help i think is a good way to find it so yeah well, and i think actually you said a really good word recognize and awareness like when you're in that moment yeah. because sometimes like you can't you don't even know that you need help so it's like when you're really dark recognizing ooh, like i'm in a bad place yeah. you know that's like the most important i guess yeah 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 self-awareness yeah it's it's not an easy thing to come by but and again, smart and starting in the small stuff, recognizing even physical things are going on in our body and kind of exploring, huh, why do I feel that way? Why am I tensed up in my neck? Why are my yes, shoulders so yes. locked up? Like there's totally. a lot of that stuff. But one of the one more thing is like so when I was doing therapy, I did some EMDR therapy. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. OK, um, it's, it's basically where they use a form of bilateral stimulation, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Okay. you know, and you, you go back on whatever traumatic memory and you kind of work through it. But anyway, one of the questions that the therapist usually asks is like, OK, you know, we're talking about this experience. Where do you feel that? And it's interesting yeah. how times you will feel that in your neck, in your head, sometimes yep. in your chest, sometimes in your stomach. I mean, you can even oh, feel yeah. it in your leg. And then when you start to explore it, it's interesting how the body has a way of um, grabbing hold of that emotion and unboxing it. Cause that's so easy, totally. especially I think for guys, but girls too, to like really box that stuff in and forget about it. And then once you, you know, get pressed in the wrong way, you know, we get that little trigger hits it and then it explodes. So you gotta, yes. gotta let the steam out of the bottle, like slowly once you shake up oh, the yeah. Diet oh, yeah. Coke, like you gotta let it out slowly. Not so it just it explodes one it day. Explodes. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Thank so. you so much for having me, Seth. Yeah, thank you so much, Laura, for, yeah, no, it was really great. I really appreciate you taking the time and for going so deep into all the stuff, motherhood. You should start a podcast, call it like a mom's trying or something like that. I just, you know, I, I, you should bring on more, more postpartum moms because it's really something that the word needs to get out because I, the first thing this mom said to me the other day, she's like, God, I wish like people would have told me how hard it is because it's almost where like talking about how hard it is people are like oh you're ungrateful or you know there's so many women that are trying to get pregnant like how can you even say that and it's like mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. hard like it, yeah it is hard yeah yeah, yeah. but anyways all good. I will. i'll take some recommendations i really enjoy it i mean it's teaching me a ton and i plan to have kids yeah, someday so i think i'll be a, a better husband so your yeah. wife's gonna be like Damn, son. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see. Well, again, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Bye. 
Thank you so much to Laura for coming on the podcast and for teaching me a thing or two about marriage and family. This was a really awesome opportunity for me. Like I said, expectant father in the next few years. So um, I'm just eating this stuff up and trying to learn as much as I can. And when I asked her about how to find peace and contentment there at the end, just want to leave you with this. Make sure that you practice asking for help, even in the small things, because eventually one day you may need some big help and you gotta have the courage and the gumption to ask. So ask for help. If you made it to this point in the podcast, though, I just want to say thank you so much for listening. If you are watching on YouTube, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, leaving a comment, that really helps. And also, if you would like, comment, subscribe, follow, do any of those other things on all the social media accounts that you may be following this on, or leave a review on any of the podcast platforms, that would be super helpful and would thank you greatly for it. If you want to sign up for our newsletter, you can do so at the stupidquestions.show website. And without further ado, I will let you know now that I will see you in the next one. See you later.